This is our visit to the UCR Botanical Garden. We won't follow the regular path. We'll begin by turning right after the entrance and walking up a hill. Then we'll follow along a ridge and enter an area of trees. Here is a map of the ground. The entrance is at the bottom and north faces to the left. This is the path that we'll follow as we enter into the area of trees. Here we will make a few stops and look at some plants. Then we'll backtrack a little bit and return again to a cross section at the base of another hill. Then we'll walk through a bunch of trees, continue across a gully, then up a hill, to an area marked L on the map, which is the Celebration of Life Memorial. Then we'll cross back and walk through the herb garden, passing by the greenhouse, the nursery, and then back downhill, past some trees and through a really nice uh, grassy area before we make our way back to the entrance. This is the entrance to the UCR Botanic Garden. Here are the restrooms near the entrance. Another set of restrooms can be found next to the herb garden at the end of our tour. Straight up this way leads to the main part of the garden, but we are going to the right and up the hill. Throughout this video, we'll be looking at unique plant adaptations, such as needles instead of leaves. Along the start of this path, there's a lot of random vegetation and a few placards by some plants. I just stopped here to show the variety of trees that are growing in the garden. Throughout the garden you'll see a variety of cacti. What kind of adaptation have these made for this plant? There are many varieties of cypress trees which seem to grow well in this climate. Other evergreens include pine trees of different varieties. Notice this one where most of the needles are near the ends of the branches.
and now a different variety of cactus. These are the juniper trees. Notice they don't have needles like a pine or leaves like a maple or oak. This is an agave plant. Notice that it has thick leaves that terminate in sharp points. This plant matures in about five years and then it grows a huge flower stalk in the middle, up to 40 feet high, after which the plant usually dies. This is a younger version of the agave. Notice the serrations on the edges of the leaves, as well as the sharp tips. Here we have the octopus agave. You can see why it's called that. It looks like it has eight arms. Many of these tropical plants have developed protective spines on their leaves or stems. See what you notice on this plant. This is a kind of fan palm that has long stems with the leaves at the end. This one is called the palmetto.
This is one of the most interesting and decorative plants of the UCR Botanic Gardens. Unfortunately, the placard is completely illegible. Notice it too has a large flowering stalk. Nearby, we have this unique fern-like shrub. This is another one of my favorite plants. The UCR Botanic Garden. It looks like it could have been around a million years ago. Here's a band palm like you might find in your own backyard. Only this one growing naturally did not have its dead bronze removed. Here is a ponytail palm. Notice the flowering structures in the center of each of these plants. The individual leaves are long and thin. 